overnight temperatures climbing into the 90s, and we have since fallen into the 70s and 80s on the Skywatch Weatherbug Network. These are real-time numbers. We're at 74 at our Scanna Weatherbug site in Ridgeway. In Irmo this evening, the Academy of Environmental Science, 81. 76 in Saluda, it's 80 currently in Sumter at the Sumter County Emergency Management Agency. Mid-90s for high temperatures at these weatherbug sites. Rain-free in the Midlands, but we have some showers to our north throughout parts of North Carolina and almost in parts of South Carolina around Horry County, but those showers are remaining again out of here. Overall, things are relatively quiet outside, and as we make our way through the overnight time frame, we'll go from 78 to 75 by 3 a.m. and 73 at 6 a.m. We'll have a southwesterly wind tonight. Sunrise at 659. The morning rush should be a dry one with plenty of sunshine and temperatures climbing from the lower 70s into the upper 70s. It's going to be another hot day tomorrow, but if we can give you a glasses half full approach on the summer like weather, it's that we're now 20 days away from the official start to fall. We just have to get through the heat first. We'll take a look at that warm forecast coming up later on. Drought situation, uh, but so the rain would be welcome, but nobody needs uh, the kind of problem we saw today no, without a doubt. definitely not like that. Chief Meteorologist Henry Rothenberg tracking it all for us tonight in the Skywatch Weather Center. Henry? Hey, good evening, guys. I want to start with some of these impressive totals down in Charleston. These are some of our Skywatch weather bug sites that we have down in the low country. Almost 1.3 inches at the Doubletree Hotel in Charleston, taking you to the Dock Street Theater with 1.62 inches, just shy of 1.2 inches inches in Monk's Corner and just shy of 1.8 inches right there at the Ravenel Bridge in Mount Pleasant before you head over into Charleston. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s. Some locations receiving anywhere from 3 to 7 inches of rainfall last night and that's what triggered much of the flooding that we experienced down the low country. We did have some flash flooding at home but uh, nothing like the, what they were dealing with down there. Things have quieted down on Skywatch Doppler radar and you can see all along the coasts we don't have a drought of any type, but we are anywhere from abnormally dry to extremely dry in the Midlands. We could use a good soaking rain to really help with that, but not the case tonight. Some areas of fog, temperatures falling into the 70s, and tomorrow, more humidity. We will be talking about increasing rain and thunderstorm chances, and yes, the tropics. Things continuing to remain active in the Atlantic. Our latest hurricane, details on that coming up. Temperature is right on target for this time of year, but when that sun made its way through those clouds when they broke up in the afternoon, the humidity starting to skyrocket. You could really feel that added moisture in the atmosphere, everything that was absorbed in the ground from yesterday's rainfall. So, yes, seasonal temperatures, but it was certainly soupy out there in the afternoon hours. We're in the 70s right now across the Palmetto State. It's 78 degrees in Columbia, 74 Rock Hill, 73 in Florence, and we have 77 for Myrtle Beach, Charleston, and Hilton Head, 72 in Aiken, Greenville, 78 degrees, just like Columbia. What about rainfall? Well, we're drying out after the showers yesterday. We could use more rainfall here, and I have a feeling that some of the soaking rains will probably help out with some of the counties in the Midlands that are under the drought, which everybody under some category of the drought, the only places that are not are right along the coast where they dealt with flooding rainfall last night. Now, as far as anything in our near future, we're not going to look for rainfall within the next 24 hours. I'm going to keep the forecast dry. We'll have some patchy fog in the morning, some of those high-level clouds as well. And you can see as we make our way through the day on Future Watch, it tries to put a few little spot showers here and there. But between you and I, I think the model's overdoing this. I think we will have some of the clouds, but I'm going to keep the rain chances out of the forecast for the first day of September. And then as we continue into the evening hours, the same story with that partly cloudy sky to mostly cloudy sky at times that will eventually begin to turn mostly clear going into tomorrow night through the overnight time frame. Taking you out to the Atlantic, our newest hurricane, Fred, barely a hurricane. It has weakened some winds at 75 miles per hour, so that is the bare minimum for a Category 1 hurricane. Let's take a look at the potential track of this storm. We do expect to see it weakening some back to a tropical storm, as you can see with this model run over the next couple of days, and it's certainly a storm We'll continue to watch for you, but it's still a good ways from here. Let's take a look at the map right now. This is a live look from our weather bug camera at the beautiful State House in downtown Columbia. Fred is 3,625 miles away from us. That is actually further than uh, our wonderful newly named Mount Denali, I believe, which used to be Mount McKinley, the tallest point in North America, way out in Anchorage, Alaska. This is a live shot from there where you can't see anything now because they've got some snow going on. 
But just to give you an idea of how far Fred is from here, and we don't expect to see Fred having any impact on our forecast, at least within the next week. All the models continuing to steer it to the north. And why is that? As we headed to September, we're in what's commonly known as a Bermuda high. It's high pressure that sets up in the Atlantic over Bermuda and brings the warm weather that we experience during the summer months. And what we begin to see is as these storms form off the coast of Africa, move across Cape Verde, that high steers them to the north. Not much of a threat for the east coast. If that high were to strengthen just a little bit, well, it could be a little bit more of a threat for the east coast. And when you have a really strong Bermuda high, that's when we start to see those uh, concerns for these storms making it into the Atlantic. Regardless, we're not concerned about any of that right now. I think it's going to remain a storm for the fish, as I say. 89 on Tuesday, 90 Wednesday to 93 on Thursday. Yes, the chance for some of those showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon hours and near seasonal temperatures continuing as we head into the weekend with those chances for rain as well. But Erica went away early Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. We've got Fred this is good. and Fred looks to go away as well. This is a, a good pattern to be in. The storms will form and the then fish can have the north. Yes, the fish is storm for the so fish. <laughs> Fred so the thank fish. You. Yes. Fred, Fred, I like that. Fred the fish storm. Fred Can you change, you know, the names of storms like we changed the names of mountains? Uh, mountains. No, that has you been don't have confusing that me all. You know, that list actually yeah. comes out years in advance. I know. And when a storm name is retired, it's not actually retired. It just cannot be used for 25 years because of insurance purposes for all the claims uh -huh. that have to be filed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See. That's why we keep But you usually around. never we use that name again because it's retired. We learn Things like Katrina, you. Andrew, stuff like that because they're yeah, nice. Well, real quick, since we last spoke about uh, 20 plus minutes ago, Hurricane Fred, as the 11 o'clock advisory came out, comes out usually about a half an hour or so before the actual timestamp on it. Well, Fred, now a tropical storm, but still thousands of miles away from here. What about us? Well, we had a lot of rainfall last night, and all of that has calmed down. That's certainly good news, especially down along the coast where they were dealing with extremely dangerous flooding conditions. While here at home, we had some isolated areas of flash flooding. But again, things have calmed down across the region, as you can see on Skywatch Doppler radar. We're going to fast forward to tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., when you join meteorologist Lauren Oleski, 5 to 9, on Good Day Columbia, the only four-hour local morning show that you can find. We'll have some areas of morning fog. We'll have some of those uh, mid and upper level clouds and that's going to make it a similar start to previous mornings. But that will burn off. You'll get some sunshine out there that will make it humid. But rain chances, well, we're not going to call for that for the first day of September. We're going to keep the forecast dry. Future watch a little overdone here trying to put some spotty showers on as you can see, but just not seeing anything to really support that evidence. And have me overly convinced that yes, we're going to see some decent showers tomorrow. So between you and I, I think the models being a little sensitive to some of the moisture in the atmosphere, I think we're going to mainly be dealing with a, a mostly cloudy sky, basically a repeat of what we saw this afternoon. Real time temperatures on our Skywatch weather bug network from Pearls in the Vista, 79 degrees, 72 in Leesville. We have 73 at the Opera House in Newberry and Ferry Chevrolet in Orangeburg, 75 degrees, a light wind for everybody. Again, the rain has been gone for hours now. Most locations in the Midlands not breaking an inch after midnight. Most of our heavy rain came late in the night on Sunday before we hit that midnight time frame. We will have some patchy fog tonight, 75 at midnight, 72 at 3 a.m., and 70 degrees by 6 a.m. As the kids head to school tomorrow morning, 70 with some of that patchy fog. Headlights on low beam, not to see but to be seen if you come across that fog. Slow it down. Remember the children are out there waiting for the school bus, riding the bike to school, walking to school. We want everyone to be safe. The fog's gone, partly cloudy, 85, somewhat humid by lunchtime. And as they head home from school, seasonal but still somewhat humid and mostly cloudy three-day planner before we hit the uh, seven-day planner 89 for the first day of september to 90 on wednesday hey thursday 93 here and that's kind of a big day because it's kickoff the gamecocks taking on the tar heels up at bank of america stadium in charlotte if you're heading up there to tailgate can't rule out an isolated storm 90 degrees for tailgate time around three o'clock that six o'clock kickoff, 88 degrees up in Charlotte. We're in the 90s and 80s to take you into next week. And Memorial Day, 89 degrees. Can't rule out a stray shower. Speaking of football and sports, stay with us because when Watch Fox News at 10 returns, we're going to take another check with the Pastor Payne.
and your Watch Fox Sports. Welcome back, everyone. Want to begin by talking about what was Hurricane Fred. It's hitting some stronger winds in the upper parts of the atmosphere that's causing the storm to continue to weaken. Winds of 40 miles per hour, and over the next 24 hours to 36 hours, we expect this storm to continue weakening, turning into a tropical depression as it hits a very unsupportive environment for tropical activity. We're taking a look at Skywatch Doppler across the nation. Just a few spot showers here and there, but at home, things are relatively quiet, and that's certainly nice, especially with many of you expected to travel just a few short miles to the north for the big game tomorrow, South Carolina and North Carolina. But again, it is quiet on Skywatch Doppler radar. And for much of the day, it should be quiet as we go into your Thursday. We will have that humidity with that Gulf moisture that continues to work its way in, courtesy of what's called the ridge of high pressure that's out in the Atlantic. There is a weak upper level disturbance that could help to trigger a few afternoon showers, mainly along the coast. And we could see them moving to parts of North Carolina. We'll put a very minimal chance of an isolated storm in the Charlotte area, but we're going to keep our forecast dry here at home as we head through the day on Thursday. I want to show you outside right now real-time numbers that you can only find on Watch Fox News with the Skywatch Weatherbug Network. It's 80 degrees at Heathwood Hall in Columbia. They made it to 98 today, a high temperature of 92 in Leesville, where it's currently 76. We made it to 95 in Orangeburg at Ferry Chevrolet. We're down to 77 now. And at the Newberry Opera House, topped out at 92, 79, that is our current temperature. Now tonight, we are expecting to see temperatures falling to about 73 degrees. It will be very comfortable out there, and it will be a seasonal night. Then tomorrow, temperatures a little bit above average, feeling like summer, a little humidity as well. 95 degrees here at home during the day. So as many of you maybe suddenly start to feel that scratchy throat uh, known as footballitis, want to get out of the office early and uh, head to your favorite patio to catch the game tomorrow night, well, things are looking good. We're looking live from our Weatherbug site in Charlotte, the beautiful skyline of the Queen City, Bank of America Stadium, just off the screen. And it's going to be a great atmosphere tomorrow night and a great night for football. If you're planning to tailgate before the game, here's what we expect. This is around 3 o'clock, 90 degrees. We'll have a partly cloudy sky. It will be muggy and 88 at kickoff. I'm not going to, again, take the chance of an isolated thunderstorm out of the forecast, but those chances are incredibly minimal. Over the next three days, we drop from the 90s into the 80s. Clemson's opener, that is on Saturday, which we'll talk about coming up in about 20 minutes. Temperatures remaining in the 80s through the Labor Day holiday to around 90 going into Wednesday. And of course, who's counting but 20 days? You're counting, apparently, Henry. So many people, are, you know, I've seen so many posts on Facebook, fall means football. Well, football officially sure beginning in the summer, so. End uh, of summer means football. How about that? Waning days of summer yes. means football. And I, I believe the, the technical uh, medical term is football fever. Henry. Football fever. Not football itis. Football Medi fever. Football fever. That's the medical. Uh, it, it's a new one. <laughs> it is. It's like swine flu. It's a new, it's a new, new. phenomenon. Yeah.